you hear stories, people say things, things are passed on social media. Are you afraid to get the COVID vaccine or the booster because of things you've heard about, whether it be blood clots or uh, the pericarditis, remember the heart inflammation that can happen? Maybe it's anaphylaxis, which is like a severe allergic reaction or even death after the vaccine. Or what about Guillain-Barre? Um, we were seeing that with Johnson & Johnson. You know, look, I, I've done videos on these things individually, but I needed to come back and do another video because I know so many of you are worried about or you have friends or family that are worried about getting the vaccine for these particular reasons. Today's video is literally breaking down all of these different potential adverse effects and what you need to know. This is literally the truth right from the CDC. Um, guys, I'm giving it to you straight. Let's jump in with blood clots. A lot of people say, I'm worried about blood clots. Well, what you're talking about um, likely is with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, we saw some cases of what's called thrombosis with thrombocytopenia syndrome, or TTS, after the Johnson & Johnson vaccine was given. Um, by the way, this and all of the things I'm going to mention today are very rare side effects. As of uh, November 2021, over 16.4 million doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine had been given in the United States. Guys, that's a lot. Uh, and there were only 54 confirmed cases. The CDC uh, associates six deaths with this rare syndrome. The point to telling you about this is that I know many people are concerned about blood clots, but the truth of the matter is out of 16.4 million people given the vaccine, there was a very small number of cases and even smaller number of deaths. Of course, none of this is ever acceptable, but let me tell you the most, probably the, one of the most important things you need to know when thinking about this. There is nothing that we do that is not without risk. And honestly, every medication you take, every vaccine you're given has potential risks, whether it's a Tylenol, whether it's a flu shot, whether it's something else. And what we do when we're thinking about vaccines is we have to weigh the risks of getting that vaccine versus the benefits. And the CDC, myself, the experts, World Health Organization and so many others says that no, yes, there is a small risk. And by the way, the risk of the um, TTS syndrome, this is typically in women under the age of 50 years old. Um, it's a very small risk um, compared to the benefit that most will receive. Let's move on though. Uh, let's talk about Guillain-Barre. That was that sort of rare neurological syndrome that was found in people who took the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Uh, I did a report on this when it first came out. Um, again, 16.4, over 16.4 million doses have been given of J&J. There have been 268 preliminary reports uh, of this syndrome, mostly men over the age of 50. What you should know about this is that Guillain-Barre as a neurological syndrome can happen with other things and can happen with other vaccines. I have had patients over the years that have had this uh, from getting other vaccines. It doesn't make it okay or right. What, it, what I'm trying to say, however, is that um, the risk does exist with a number of things. And once again, we have to weigh the risk versus the benefits. The risk is very small though, and that's what's important. The risk is small and it's very rare. Let's talk about anaphylaxis or um, an allergic reaction, severe allergic reaction afterwards. That's very, very rare, by the way. Two to five people per million vaccinated in the United States will have a severe allergic reaction. Um, this can honestly happen after any vaccine, though. That's why we keep you for 15 or so minutes after you get your booster or your vaccine to make sure that you're doing okay. Remember, anaphylaxis can happen with not just vaccines, with other medications and things like that. Let's talk about the heart inflammation, okay? This is rare, myocarditis or pericarditis. Um, uh, and as of November 2021, there were 1,949 reports in people uh, 30 years of age or younger, mostly in males and in young adults, as I mentioned. Only 1,071 reports were confirmed. You're saying 1,071 reports, Dr. Jen, that's a lot. Well, it's more than some of the other numbers I gave you, but keep in mind that the myocarditis, pericarditis, when it occurs, typically is self-limiting, which means it tends to resolve on its own people, young people tend to get better, which is wonderful. They tend to improve. Okay. That's very important. Let's talk about um, deaths after the COVID vaccine. This is a big one. Uh, a lot of people will write on my comments. They'll say, well, Dr. Cottle, Dr. Jen, you don't know how many people have died. Don't you know how many people have died after this vaccine? So let's talk about it. Okay. Let's, let's go there. Um, this is according to the CDC, as all of these numbers are deaths after the vaccine is rare, according to the CDC. And, and we know this to be the case. Over 459, million doses of the COVID vaccine have been given in the United States. Um, the VAERS, that's the uh, adverse um, 
reporting system, adverse events reporting system that we have. I know many of you guys are familiar with that VAERS system because you'll quote that in the, in the comments that you give. VAERS has over 10,000 reports of death after the COVID vaccine. This is what you need to keep in mind about this because I know some of you are saying, I told you so, not so fast. First of all, the FDA requires that healthcare providers uh, report any deaths after a COVID vaccine to the VAERS system, even if we don't know. Uh, that the vaccine caused the death. That's the first thing. And also with the VAERS system, VAERS is based on self-reporting. I did an entire video about this. VAERS is based on self-reporting simply because people report that something bad happened after a vaccine. This vaccine doesn't actually mean that the vaccine caused the bad thing, okay? Um, the VAERS system does not uh, necessarily uh, confirm causality or say, oh, well, somebody had a heart attack after the vaccine. Well, the vaccine must have caused it. Their system does not do that. It just allows you to report things, whether or not the adverse effect was actually caused by the vaccine. Guys, remember everything we do in life has risk. Getting in a car has risk. Taking a medication for our blood pressure, for our asthma, everything we take has risk. Taking uh, Tylenol has potential risk. Taking vaccines, any vaccines has risk. So what we do is we say, okay, well, there is risk. But does the benefit of doing the thing outweigh the risk that exists? We know that there's a greater risk of having problems and complications from getting COVID, the illness, than getting the vaccine. So yes, I'm not gonna lie to you and say that there are no risks. Yeah, of course there are potential side effects, but there is nothing in life, or at least in medicine, there is no medicine, surgery, procedure that doesn't have potential risks. Anytime you go to surgery, what do they give you? What do they list for you? The things that could potentially happen. So this is not something that we're unfamiliar with. The same thing is with the vaccine. You have to weigh this though and understand that these numbers are very, very rare. Number one, number two, the risk of having these problems and others from getting COVID, the illness, far outweighs the risk of getting these things or others from getting the vaccine. Guys, I hope this is helpful. You guys are watching from around the world and I am going to ask you to not only share this video with people that you think may need to hear it, but I hope you take this video to heart. And don't take my word for it. Look this up on the CDC website. Look this up in the World Health Organization. But please understand that the COVID vaccine is by and large safe and effective. It is our best bet for getting out of this pandemic. And with, with variants rampaging throughout the world and COVID cases literally going bonkers, um, it's what we have to do. There are myths running around that will make you think that getting the COVID vaccine is wrong and it's bad and it's dangerous. But I'm here to tell you that that's not the case. The vaccines are safe and effective. Are there potential risks? Absolutely, but everything has risks and these risks are relatively small compared to the benefit that we get. Of course, you gotta ask your doctor, run it by your doctor, make sure this is right for you. But guys, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Let's deal with facts, let's not deal with fear. Let me know what you think. I wanna know, you always tell me anyway, I wanna know more. Was this video helpful? Were these data points helpful? It helps me know how I can help you. More and more people are getting the vaccine every day. I want to know if you got the vaccine. Consider joining my group called I Got the COVID Vaccine on Facebook. You can hear from other people who are getting the vaccine. Uh, for those of you on Facebook uh, who have not liked and followed my page, I invite you to do so. And for those of you who send stars, uh, I so appreciate you and I respond to you personally. For those of you who are watching me on YouTube, um, hello, it's good to see you. Please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell for updates. And by the way, I have subscription groups for both, guys. I hope to see you. Um, please stay safe and please get your vaccine. Talk to your doctor if you have any questions. Bye guys.